Good. Hello everyone, my name is Stefania Popowska and I'm working as a Xamarin developer for the last few years. Today I will be presenting on DevOps continuous delivery for mobile applications uh, using cloud-based services, Azure DevOps and App Center. Before getting into the presentation, I would like to thank everybody that made this possible, the sponsors and the organizers. And on the other side, I cannot say how grateful I am for having you here in such a number and how much I appreciate your will to spend your time here with me for the next hour and I, I will tend to make it worth. What the presentation would be if we do not start it with a little story in the background. So a year ago I had a presentation on CI City using Azure DevOps and I, ha I love interaction with the audience so I had a, a little list in here um, with, with the questions. I will run quickly through it. Uh, how many of you have deployed a mobile application on App Store and Play Store using manual deployment? How many of you have done the same thing? It's not raising hands. <laughs> how many of you have done the same thing using automated processes? How many of you have fully covered it uh, for every feature with UI tests and unit tests? And how many of you have delivered the application without any fear of bugs and crashes after the, the release? <laughs> So for this year conference, I just choose to skip it. Why? Because DevOps should not be an option. So anytime if you're planning to have uh, to create application, you should always take into consideration the amount of time to, to create the processes as well. So what DevOps comes down to is about creating and delivering a value. And it's not something I came up to because without changing a single line and without spending any amount of time for, for packaging, validating, uh, testing, and, and de the, the whole deployment process will have a, a great scalability, stability, and as well as which we can le lead us to the best, best user experience. So the only, questions I, the only question I choose for this year is how many of you do agree with me? <laughs> <laughs> now you can raise your hand. <laughs> Hope I'm not the only one. <laughs> okay, so here are some more of the points, and it's uh, what DevOps can bring us is increasing the quality of the service. Yeah, we can <coughs> reduce the complex delivery procedure. We can have automated testing on lots of devices, monitoring and bug reports, and as well as stress relief in the end, the most important one. So here's the question. <laughs> okay, so if it's not the house, then what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk how uh, to to have the to how to create the, the services better, how to make them better, how to have full control over them, and in the end, uh, how to do that on the most simpler way possible. The key of understanding the automated processes is to know how to to do, do that manually by from from the build point to, to production. So I created a little pipe which I will go step by step, and I will explain each step on how to do that manually. So later on, we'll see how that is covered automatically. The first thing is always coding. And if we have a product that is ready to be deployed to production, and we want to publish our, um, our product uh, pub uh, to, 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 the, to the rest of the, the world, then um, next thing is to do the build and the deploy. In the building, uh, in the building um, step, here I choose the most popular applications, the Android and the iOS, but this does not matter because we know that Xamarin supports as well as the, the, form, the, the, the Mac and the Windows, but it is just doesn't matter. Let's stick to these two. To, have, uh, to, to, to uh, build the application, we'll need a capable machine that do these uh, things, so it should be set up correctly. And uh, for example, if you have an Android application, you can have a Macintosh or you can have an on uh, Windows that will uh, with that is capable for building your application. If you have an iOS application, you'll need to have a Macintosh to build your your application. So these machines will call call it later on with one name, and that name is Agents. Once we have this agent, we are ready to do the deployment processes. I will not go into the deployment process because uh, Visual Studio is what is uh, doing what it's doing that for for us so um, once everything is built and deployed we'll have the executable uh, files that will need to proceed on the later steps so for the android application we'll have that 
APK file, and for the iOS application, we'll have the APA file. Once we have that, and in the meantime, we also I also need to mention that we'll need to sign them up, sign them up, and also change the version code and the version name that will represent a unique release for us. So once we have this, next step is to do the testing. Because this is a manual explanation, we'll have to test our application by running it on our device, or maybe run to some of the simulators and click to every 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 feature or everything that we changed. So we make sure that it's not some, something does not crash. And as well as if we have unit UI tests or unit tests, um, then we'll have to execute them. So I have a question here. What do you think which uh, testing is more preferable for mobile application, the unit testing or the UA testing? I think combined are both. Yeah. <laughs> both? I don't think you have to choose, but if you have to do them both. Yeah, you always have to do them both. But it's more important to have the UA test because there are lots of densities on devices. And you cannot uh, cover all of them, so we, we will not have the, the whole uh, bench of uh, mobile applications that are out there. So it's quite good to have the, the UA testing as well as the unit testing. Next step is to do the distribution. Distribution means that we'll need uh, to, to, to publish this application somewhere. And um, it's, if it's the Android, we'll have to publish it on Play Store. If it's the iOS, we'll have to publish on Test Flight or in, in, in App Store if it's ready for production. And many of you may think this is the whole, this is the whole procedure. I assure you there is one more important step, and it's the monitoring. Monitoring part covers the, the analytics and the crash reports, the logs, and etc. So this is how we do the things manually. Next thing is to see how it's covered automatically. Coding, it's always something that comes on our side. So we'll have to do the code, unfortunately. Next thing, build and deployment is covered by automated builds using Azure DevOps and App Center. Testing. Uh, you, can, um, you can run the codes from Azure DevOps and execute it in, in the App Center. Distribution, uh, in the distribution part, there's the, the services. They're already uh, there, so for, for different markets, the App Store and the, the Play Store. And the monitoring, it's uh, monitoring application means that you can uh, do, um, you can execute um, uh, tests in real time and you can monitor the, the performances and the, the analytics as well using App Center. So many of these are covered by both of the services, the Azure DevOps and the App Center. So once I got familiar with App Center, I asked myself, why should I still use the, the Azure DevOps? But I could not prove myself more wrong. Why? Because um, how should we look on, on, on App Center? App Center is, um, is a set of services that, op that is optimized for, for mobile application. And Azure DevOps is really extremely powerful to tool, especially the release pipelines, which we'll see later on. So much talking. Let's get into the demo. For the presentation purposes, I have created a mobile application, which is a simple master page application. And it's written on Xamarin Forms. Um, it is publicly uh, pushed on, on, on uh, GitHub, so if you want to contribute or you want to uh, view it, you can uh, visit anytime. Here is, um, it is because it's written in summary forms, here is the Android, the iOS project, and as well as the forms itself. Uh, and here, there, uh, there is a project called UI, UI Tests, which will cover the testing of application, so we'll see how the text tests are executing later on um, the App Center. And yet, if you want to skip the coding part, um, Azure DevOps, if you're navigating to Azure uh, Demo Generator, you can see by, by logging with your organization and choosing a template, you can see that here's an option to choose one of the most popular, um, popular repositories out there, Smart Hotel, the Parts Unlimited, and many more. By selecting one of these templates, it will be directly added on your organization on the Azure DevOps. So we can uh, check how to do the builds and releases <coughs> on there. But let's use the other one I have created for this demo. Next thing, uh, next thing is to see uh, we, we, if we go back to the presentation, we see that the coding part is covered in here. So next thing to do is to do the build and deploy. 
First, I will start with Azure DevOps. Um, here in the Azure DevOps, in the menu, we can see that uh, there, there are lots of uh, menus and sub-menus in it, which can help us to, to with, our, with the workload and to organize the, the sprints and, and other teams' uh, teams uh, jobs. And, but it's not something we'll put focus today. So what are we going to put focus today? Is the pipelines and the builds, releases, libraries, staffs, groups, and everything that is inside that menu. How can we create a build definition? If we go to click new button and create new pipeline, we can see that there is an option to use the classic YAML or uh, to use the YAML or to use the classic editor. So I will choose here the classic editor. And we can see there are uh, lots of sources uh, they're, they're from where we can pull our code and the, the Azure itself, the GitHub, the Bitbucket, and many more. So Azure allows us to use many uh, repositories as and many sources for our code. Because um, my, my app is hosted on GitHub, I will use the GitHub and here in the repository, choose the Xamarin Expert Day. By default, it will be selected the master branch. If we go continue, uh, we can see here that we can choose a template that builds our kind of app. So because it's a Xamarin, um, it's a Xamarin governance, I will use the Xamarin tasks, but you can see that here are lots of templates that you can use. For example, if you have an application in native Android, you can use na native Android. You have, if you have Xcode, you can use the, the Xcode, so for, for Jack-TC or for Java native, whatever, but let's choose one of these. If we go and try to apply it, we can see that the whole definition is already created for us. But as the presentation, for, for the time purposes, I choose to show uh, many things on already created applications. So if you have further questions, you can meet me outside and see if uh, you need any more details or if you have many questions for it. Let's go into that. Uh, here is an Xamarin Android um, pipeline, if I, and if I go to edit, I can see that here is the lots of the, task, the, the same tasks that, uh, that was on the previous build definition, but a little bit reorganized. We can see here there are two blocks, and what are those? What those blocks represent? It's the phases or the the um, the jobs. And how should we choose if we have to, uh, if should we have to have uh, um, these jobs? Uh, if, we, if you have to have a multiple um, builds, for example, if you want to build your, your Android application, if you want to build your iOS application, or if, it, if those two applications are communicating with some external service for, for, for example, the API and et cetera, you can put them as phases for this application I just choose to have two phases, the, the Android application and the uh, building the Android application, and also the testing is another phase. Uh, and as we see, um, these two phases are wrapped down in, in one, um, one container, and it's called the pipeline. Here in the pipeline, there is a, a field called the agent pool. What are the agent pools? Agent pools means that we can choose here that capable machines that build our application. So one good thing here is that we can choose the self-hosted and the hosted built agents. So um, if you have, uh, for example, a secure code that needs to, do, does, uh, it's required to not to build somewhere in the cloud, so it's restricted for your, uh, for your company, you can choose to, to run on, on, um, on, uh, on machines that are only on, that are working only on your application. Or for example, on the other side, if you do not have, um, if you do not have a machine that is capable for building your, your application, for example, I don't know, if you have iOS application and don't have a Macintosh, you can choose a hosted, um, a hosted agent, so it will be given to you. Here, I choose my, my PC, so in this build pipeline, I'm using this um, computer. Uh, let's get into the tasks. Um, here you can use, use the, the Xamarin Android. I choose to, to use the Xamarin Android build. 
Uh, and uh, because it, we have to build the Android application, I choose to build the, the Android project and afterwards to create an app package. And if you want to, to use that app bundling, you can uh, just run a simple MS build task and, uh, and run a simple uh, code that is there and on, on the documentation. So it will create the bundle link uh, for you and it will not be the APK file, but that another file. So you can push that on the Play Store as well. And here it is. You can see their standard tasks like um, NuGet restoring, um, using NuGet, NuGet tool, and uh, there is uh, something called the signing. So after we have that package, uh, we need to, uh, to sign it to proceed it further. So because it's something that represents security for our application, we'll need, to, uh, we'll need to pull that key store from somewhere. So where are, do I keep that key store? There's something called in a submenu, and it's called library. Here in the library, you can choose to put your secure file. So here is the JSON file that later on I will need to, to um, <laughs> later on I will need to, will need it to, to validate on, on uh, the, the, the Play Store. And here is the key store file. So it does not matter if it's something connected to, to your application, it can be any file that you think it's secure for your application. So it can be config file, it can be text file, whenever you want it. So one, once it's here, in the simple, uh, but you, by using this simple task, we can secure our application. For, for we, we talk a lot about tasks, and we are, are these tasks. If we click on the plus button here, you can see there are many embedded tasks already in here, but you can use the marketplace as well. And if you want to, to create your own and, and publish a mar marketplace, then you can use it directly in your application. So next step is the testing. Here in testing, I, I just added a simple task that will connect my application to the App Center. And uh, because uh, I will need the UI tests, first I, I built the, the test project and then um, I executed right on my APK file. By having all this, I think we covered the next step that is called, the, the step that is called build and deploying. So next step is testing, but we'll go on the testing later on, on, on the App Center. So, so next step is distribution. How do we distribute an application? If we see, oh, not there. So if we try, try to run it, we'll see that after the build successfully are finished, there is something called artifacts at the top. And in the artifacts file, we can put anything that we want to proceed later on. So let's navigate to my favorite part, the releases, and see why they're extremely powerful. Here on the releases, if we uh, edit the release that is capable of deploying our application, we can see there that looks like a storyboard of stages. And um, in, in this uh, in this release pipeline, I have created uh, two paths for deploying our application. One is to QA and then deployment to alpha, and the other one is directly deploying the applications to the alpha. So if, we, if I create this release, you can see there are two paths uh, for, for there. They can be executed all together, but you can choose which path you want to use. So if I exclude these two, my application will go directly to, to, to the alpha. If I exclude this one and include this one, then my application will go through the QA process and then to alpha. So what I mean by QA and what I mean by deployment to alpha, we'll need to see what's inside of these stages. Here in the tasks or by clicking in any of it, you can see that um, there, there is a task inside here for the QA is the, the same task as in the build, the, which will execute the, the tests in, uh, into uh, into our APK file and uh, and uh, invoke a function that will run the test on the app center and in the in the other another two tasks we can see they're both of them same so we are not going to, to copy paste the tasks and we'll uh, introduce something that is called a test group in here what are the test groups um, that test groups are something are 
um, or, or, or something that will uh, ex encapsulate a group of or sequence of tasks that can be used in every release or build pipeline that we mm, want to use later on. So furthermore, you can exclude the para tam parameters as variables and set different parameters for for each of the applications or each of the builds you want to use. For example, if you have multiple uh, Android application and all of them are deployed uh, to are deployed to alpha, you can choose to use the test group and then just change the parameters. So different APK file, different JSON file, etc. If we go into the test groups, here they are. We can see that here is the task I used. And if by clicking on it, we can see there is a simple task that will deploy our application. And here is the JSON file and the APK file. So by, by running this, it will uh, take our APK and publish it on Play Store. How do we, um, how do we um, add these task groups? There's something I did not tell you. So it will, once it is created, it will appear as a regular task on your, on your, uh, on your release task. So I can search for it. Here it is. Once we have them, let's get back to our release. So if I choose to, to run the QA and the deploy path, probably in most of the organizations, uh, there are members that, um, that represent the QA uh, team and there are members that represent the dev team. So we'll need to have approval from, from one of the QA team. How can we add that? We will not go and pick them up, so <laughs> please uh, check my application and write me if everything is good. We can just, in, uh, if we open the pre-deployment conditions in here, there is something called pre-deployment approvals. If we check that in, here we can add, um, we can add multiple users that are dedicated to test our application, and once they approve, we can put that automatically or manually we can uh, we can choose to to deliver the app to the play store and let's say that we have successful qa testing we have successful build uh, we have successful deployment on the play store all the tests on play store are, are well and then application goes well but yet something it's not good for for our application and we get negative reviews for example, if and we have um, bad Twitters for our application, what are we going to do? Do you have any suggestions in here? OK. <laughs> what I do, I, I do a completely rollout. So I will roll back to, to the previous application and pull, push that back. So And there is some cool feature that I've learned um, a few months ago, and it's called the Twitter sentiment. So if we choose to use the Twitter sentiment, then we can do the analytics and have an alert that something is not going well with our application. So there are lots of possibilities that can be done here. We can choose the Twitter sentiment, or for example, we can do a rollout by increment. You can do the rollout incrementally, so 10%, 20%, etc. And that everything is done in here. So you can choose to, to, to do many things in here. So you can invoke some RESTful APIs, you can invoke some major functions, and etc. So I think so much uh, we have so much covered here in the release pipelines. And once we pushed it out, uh, pu once we, we run this, we can have our application directly on the on the Play Store. So so much about stages, so much about builds, tasks, etc. Lots of things. But the point is, where is the simple thing? Simplicity comes when we talk about the App Center. Let's go to App Center. So we will see that I will, because here I have the Xamarin Expert Day Android application, I will create a new application that will represent my iOS application. I will do it by scratch. And we can see that after five minutes, we have a build definition that will uh, that will build our application, and we can push it on the store right in those uh, five minutes. So if we go click here and add new, add new, 
and choose to add a new application. We always have to type the name. It will be the iOS application. So we can choose here. You can see there are a variety of, um, of apps that you can use. So it does not matter if it's written on Xamarin. It can be written in, in native as well. I will choose Xamarin and the iOS by adding a new application. We can see here that an application was created for us. Here on the menu, uh, there are three, mm, three submenus or maybe menus, whatever, that represent the build, testing, and the distributing uh, processes. As well as here is the Android SDK, uh, here is the App Center SDK that later on will help us to monitor and uh, to do the analytics for, for, for the application. But let's go to the build. Here I will use the GitHub. Here are my repositories on GitHub. If I choose the Xamarin Expert Day, I can see that by adding these three steps, I have already created a build definition. So let's configure it, configure this build a little bit. If we click on configure the build, we can see that everything comes down to pop-ups and switches. So the project is, because uh, it's, it's in written in iOS, I will choose the, uh, the, the iOS project. For the configuration, we'll always have to choose the release. SDK version is just fine, code version is fine, and here we can choose to if, if we want to run our application on the simulator or to do um, a real on to, to test it on a real device. So if I go on devices, I will have to add the provisioning file, file uh, provisioning profiles and the certificates, which are mandatory for uh, building an application on, on real devices. But because I do not have them right now, I will choose just the simulator build. By choosing that, we can see here that there are some advanced, advanced options as well. I will switch that off. Advanced option, options here is the status batch. I love this when I see on some of the GitHub repositories, but I do not do this for mine. So here I can add a sta status that my application successfully built and it's just a switch. So it will gener generate a link, and that link you can use on your, um, on your GitHub later on. So everything is set up. Now by clicking Save and Build, you'll be uh, given an, a machine that, uh, or an agent that is capable for building the application. So we'll need to wait a little bit. OK, while we are waiting, we can see the testing. Uh, because testing can take a while, I choose to show the test uh, run, run on the Android application. So if we navigate to the Android application and go into the test submenu, we can see here there is something called test runs and device sets. In the device set, we can always choose to create a device set. And by clicking on that, we can see there are tons of um, mobile devices in here. So we can choose what we want to, to have in our, in our devices, if anyone wants to find their phone in here. <laughs> so by, by clicking the device sets, um, I, uh, by selecting them and by cre creating a new device set. OK, let's do that. Yeah, we have to put a name. And if we write down something here and set the device set, there will be something like this created on. So for this, uh, for this, um, uh, for for my test runs, I just choose to to use the Google Pixel phone. If we go back to test runs and create a new test run, we can see that in in the testing uh, in the pe testing menu, we can uh, in the testing uh, view, we can choose our QA test devices in here. So if we have another one in here, we can choose that as well. By running the tests, there's something like this will show up. And here we can see uh, how our, our app is responding with, with the tests. So there's some steps that I already created. So app is initialized. 
navigate into the agenda tab, get back and click on the button. And there are lots of statistics here at the right that comes with, with the testing. Once we have that, next thing is to distribute our app. So if all the tests successfully um, successfully run, so you can see here there are lots of that, that failed, and there is some error in here, and some of them passed. If everything passed, then next thing is to proceed our application to the distribution services. Here it is in, in the distribute uh, in the dis if you enter the distribute menu, we can see there are three submenus in there. So groups and stores. If we choose to deploy our application into groups, we can add some collaborators that are by, by email or something like that. Uh, so it's like an internal testing for your application. Or you can choose to deploy your app to the store. So by, by, by connecting to a store, you can see all the possibilities that, uh, for example, if you if you're having an Android application, you can see that here you can choose the Google Play or something else. Here are the two, three tracks. So if we choose to, to deploy our app to alpha, then we choose alpha. If we choose to, build our, uh, to deploy our app in beta, then beta or production as well. So because my, 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 my release represents uh, the, the alpha, I choose to deploy the app, so the alpha. So publish it to Google. By clicking on this field, you will, you will, your app will be directly published in there. So let's see what happens with our, oh, not this one. No. This one. We can see that not that it started, it's finished, and it's successfully finished in just five or maybe ten minutes. So here in the app, there is here in the in um, here in the in the in the build, you can see there is a lock, and if something fails, you can see what's the error and fix it for for further. So let's sum up. If we go back here, we see that we covered the testing and the distribution as well. So in the end, we can choose to do the monitoring if we register our application with the App Center with adding a simple uh, simple line of code, it's like one line of code. Then uh, our app, once, it, once our app is published, it will lock the, the, it will lock the crashes and analytics here at these two, two points. So I haven't run yet, but you can see there are errors, <coughs> crashes, etc. So you can modify it to, to send you mails, notifications, connect it to Slack, or whenever you want. Let's get back. So everything here is covered. <coughs> and let's uh, conclude. The question is now when to use which, because we saw that uh, I don't know what happens with Okay. <laughs> I'll give it. Um, if you want, uh, if you have uh, when to use which, if you have a simple application that does not need to be covered, uh, to be configured a lot, then you can always choose App Center as, as a solution. So if you want to, to avoid the, 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 um, the complicated configuration and in the end why the app to run on your colleagues and not on your machine, then you should still use the App Center. As well as if you want to, to use the, the App Center diagnostic and if you want to manage all <coughs> the things in one central place, meaning that if you want to, want to pay for only one service, then you can choose to use the App Center. On the other side, when to use uh, the Azure DevOps if you want to build other application. For example, if you have a mobile application that is, uh, is a client, and uh, but it's communicating with other uh, products like API databases, and it's uh, it is on your um, it is on your it develop on your organization as well. Then you can choose the the, the Azure DevOps. If you want um, compliance and security, this does not mean that <laughs> App Center is not secure, but meaning that uh, if you want to use the self-hosted agents, because there are no possibilities to, to do that on App Center, you still can use the Azure DevOps. And if you have a um, complex application, or you have multiple, um, you have same product, but you want to do the branding and stuff like that, 
um, on, on that, so create multiple applications from one, then you can reuse the same code and, uh, and modify it for different, uh, for different apps and platforms and frameworks as well. And in the end, if, you're, uh, if your organization already invested in Azure DevOps, you can still use the Azure DevOps for, for applications and not switch on to the app center. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs>